back inside. You don't want me to work, right? You want me to go play with you. Do a little bit more and I'll go for another walk, okay? Keep moving now. a bed the size of this and you can lie up here and look out the window. You like that plan?
are you? Tell you? Good girl. What do you think of that? You like this bed? You can look out the window. You must have gone far through the forest, did you? Not a girl. Putting a stick on the fire, Cal?
plane book. You can't get the planes. You can't keep the planes away. Would you like to go get the plane? Protect us from the jets.
Put, put the camera away and I checked my phone messages and I had a, an email from Bob. Bob, you were asking me about the space underneath the window here on the east side of the cabin. So what happened with this is that when I was building the cabin I knew these two windows were going in so I stopped being concerned about doing a proper lap on the end logs or sorry on the ends of each logs. Um, normally if I wanted those to be proper structural wall without any breaks in it, I would have uh, staggered those joints and done some kind of shiplap or something. Or some fancy timber framing lap. But uh, I knew these windows were going in. Now, because uh, with a cabin built on the ground like this, even though there's a, a deep bed of gravel underneath, it is going to settle. Plus the logs, I think they're pretty close to 100% season, but they do uh, shift and we and it will settle over time, maybe three or four or five inches. So here, the top of the walls, I left the window short and I ran these two by eights up to support the walls from moving in and out. And then I spiked the walls together, all these logs together. And this board here is sort of loose in there and there's a gap at the top of it so that as the top layers or top log courses start settling it doesn't crush the window and it doesn't leave a big gap because if this was supporting or the window frame was supporting that upper log if all these settled that log would stay in that place because it transfers right to the ground the load through these vertical supports that log would end up staying at that level and we'd end up with a big gap here at the top so, um, so because I was doing that, leaving this, this uh, gap and making it a structural support for the width of the window, I just cut it all the way down to the ground. To the, well, not quite to the ground, to the bottom two courses of logs. So uh, what I essentially did is transferred the weight from up here all the way down to those logs down at the bottom two courses. And... This gives me a couple of options in the future. One is that we were talking about maybe making an attached bathroom at some point, a washroom. So if we were to do that, this would be a good door, just to maybe a 24 or 30 inch door going out through here. So it just didn't make sense to try to piece in logs 
across the bottom of this window just for you know two or three courses. So I carried that all the way down to the ground. Now the other thing is that I was planning on putting this kitchen on the side of always since pretty well the beginning and I thought instead of drilling a hole through the logs that I would leave that kind of as an option to put some kind of either a water cistern to pump water out and or a way to drain the water out from the sink through the wall. Now I've changed my mind on that doing something different but nonetheless that's why this was left the way it is. Um, it's still a possibility, it's still an option to bust through this wall at some future point, put an addition on this side. But in the meantime, I've built this storage bench here. People can sit on it and the dog, I'm hoping I can encourage her to sleep here instead of over there. So I'll probably put some kind of you know, foam or padded cushion on top of this thing. And she likes to look at the window too so she can jump up and look for squirrels or see who went to the uh, outhouse. So I hope that answers your question. I appreciate um, everybody asking me questions and I try to get back to people as much as possible unless it's uh, um, something that um, I haven't uh, decided to disclose yet because there's an upcoming episode that's going to answer the question in more detail. And there's quite a few questions like that, as you know. So there you go, Bob. Hope you uh, got the answer you're looking for. So this is how I grew up. Out on a swamp like this or a marsh behind my parents' house just north of Toronto and we would go as a family skating on this uh, frozen river it would flood exactly like this and I would you know skate with the family and then when I was a little bit older me and my buddies would go down and play hockey out on this uh, on this swamp and on the river of course we pushed the limits as far as uh, the seasons were concerned before and after good ice so there was always pucks going through the ice people going through the ice and I'm pulling ourselves out and uh, get the fire going or some hot chocolate and warming up but great way to learn how to play hockey and how to skate all these little cattails and sticks and everything wherever the heat could heat those things up the uh, th ice would be thin and it would break and you had to kind of skate around those deke those out as well as your the other players so learned a lot um, skating on places like this so it was a great time great childhood and then of course when the marsh thawed out in the spring full of bullfrogs and all kinds of other uh, amphibians and turtles and bugs and everything that I could, could uh, learn about and birds nesting in the marsh so I'd collect bird eggs and and uh, learn a lot about the habits of the birds and everything so learn an awful lot about wildlife and about nature in a place exactly like this.